Hey everybody in YouTube land, it's Natalie Antonov again with Gable Music Ventures. We have another interview with the experts. We're trying to get you closer to the people that can get you closer to your dreams. Today, we have special guest Fiora. Now, if you don't know a whole lot about Fiora, you're going to now. She's a music artist, composer, producer, and a writer from Toronto, Canada. She's been gaining traction in the last several years, getting her music placed in TV, movies, commercials. She's been featured on MTV, Netflix, Disney, Amazon Prime. She's also a member of the Screen Composers Guild of Canada, Women in Film and Television Toronto, a Women in Studio alum with Canadian Music Publishers Association, and a member of the Alliance for Women in Film and Television. Whew, that was a lot. This is gonna be a good one. Let's get into it. Hey, Fiora, how are you doing today? I'm so good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing peachy. Great, <laughs> great day. So um, tell us a little bit about your your background in music specifically. Yeah, um, music has been my whole life. I began from a very early age, around three or so, when I started playing piano. Um, from there, I was learning theory, music history, harmony, all of that. Uh, excruciatingly fun stuff. I actually did a little bit of jazz as well. Um, and I ended up going to an arts high school as a music major. Um, I, I have a lot of memories from being a young kid, doing songs at the piano, creating little pieces. It's sort of always been how I express myself. That's pretty cool. Now, I, I so tell me a little bit about how um, all the different hats you wear, and I listed just now at the intro, like uh, probably six or seven different things that you are a part of or have done or do. Now, those are tons of different kinds of hats that you wear. Do you see yourself enjoying one more than the other or kind of tending to one more it's, than the other? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, I do actually wear a lot of hats. Do you like that? You like that action? Um, I actually do wear a lot of hats, so I, I love that. That's great. Um, in, in music, I feel like all the different spaces that I occupy are more or less linked to one another. Um, mm -hmm. They don't necessarily feel like separate work. Um, I feel that they all sort of influence and help shape um, each other with different parts from each interweaving. Lately, I feel that I've really been leaning into production and composition specifically. Um, you know, uh, my background, I, I actually was way more in the composition sort of realm um, music composition realm and uh i took this sort of interesting film tv Sinkland detour um because the music i was creating really works well in those mediums which is amazing um but i didn't really i was never really changing you know my sound it just so happened that it was like oh this actually can work really well in this space um but yeah i feel that they all interact really cool and well um with each other uh but yeah i mean I, my heart, my heart is just in the, it's in the creative process. So um, because a lot of those elements operate, you know, under that creative umbrella, I do, I, they all share a special place um, for me in my heart. Got it. So you love them all equally. I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's great. Um, now you were talking a little bit about your background. And so I kind of have to ask, you know, is it, you went to school for music. You, you've you've gone to, um, let me see here, Bachelor of Music, Master's of Music and Composition, um, PhD at NYU Music Composition, and then- well, uh, was, I was pursuing that. I, let's not let's not get carried away. Like I'm not Dr. Fiora. I was, I'm on, no, like I, I was in pursuit. So in yeah, I'm not, not gonna- Not quite finished, but, no. but all in all, you have chosen, or in your life, you have been able to go to school for music. How do you feel about uh, about how that has shaped your career? You know, what kind of effect has it had? And do you do you think that people should do this? Would you would you advise everyone to kind of go to school for music if that's what they're trying to do? Yeah, um, you know, I think everyone's everyone's path, and and you hear this a lot. I think in general, like everyone's path is different, and it's very true. Mm -hmm. um, so my path, I began and. It was it wasn't just I began I was on this on route in a very education in the institution of education sort of um, you know road and and that worked really well for me I think I I 
I reached a point when I hit um, postgrad studies, you know, at NYU really is when this sort of culminated for me when I realized, you know, I wasn't a hundred percent, my heart wasn't a hundred percent in the educate, like Asian kind of um, pursuit anymore. And I don't like, the thing is, I don't like half-assing things. And so it felt like I was sort of riding two horses at once, you know, I was like doing the splits and I'm like, I was working in the music industry and I was in school. And when you're at that sort of school level, you kind of have to be fully committed. Um, You know, it is a huge commitment because it's a huge honor and a privilege. So I'm a huge advocate for education, specifically for the arts and for music. My my overall suggestion for aspiring creatives in this field Mm -hmm. is to gain the real life experience. If you can do it simultaneous to school, do that. I think when I, I honestly think that it's most important, education is most important in music at the young, the young ages. Mm-hmm. I feel that it's really lacking in the school systems. And I think that's really where, you know, a fostering of that could occur. Um, and then a- the aftermath, it's up to you. It depends what you want to do. But I know that my, you know, I have nothing but um, respect and appreciation for the education I was able to receive. But um, I'm also I also sort of think that the education of the school of life, um, that's sort of the education that's really helped shape where I'm at now as well. Gotcha. Is is there anything you can say in specific you can attribute to like, yeah, that definitely helped me in my career, like learning yeah. that or going to that particular school or class or whatever? I think, yeah, I think that, that um, so when I went, I did my master's in music at Belmont University, which is in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's a small little school um, and it's known for its commercial music uh, programs. A lot of people, I think Brad Paisley went there, like a lot of people kind of have gone, you know, in the industry to Belmont and for with good reason. Um, Ironically, actually, I think that again, it wasn't actually in Belmont. It was because of Belmont that I was able to get introduced to film TV sync like that sort of land um, and music because there was in the second year of the master's program. There was this, uh, it was like an apprenticeship, they called it, where basically you go out into the industry under the moniker of the school, Belmont, and that's sort of the stamp of approval so that people don't completely turn you away, like at first. Um, You still have to do a little bit of harassing, but it's easier to get in the door a little bit. Um, And uh, and that was really sort of, I think, a huge help, actually, in, in introducing me to those collaborations you know in in that sort of realm so yeah absolutely very cool very cool now um i'm gonna be transparent here uh we as gable music adventures uh, hadn't really heard of you before uh we might live under a rock i'm not sure uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, our very good friend angela chic who's from around here in delaware and uh moved out to la uh had given us your name uh, and that's how we started, you know, understanding, wow, this is, this is definitely something, somebody that we want to talk to. Um, now, now she lives in, in, in LA and you, you live in Toronto. I, I think, uh, do you also live in LA or is that? I do not. I, I was, I'm up until, let's say up until the pandemic, I was traveling quite a bit back and forth. Um, but no, I'm, I'm fully in Toronto right now, wherever all my crap is at the same time is where I consider to be living. So it's Good call. Here. Yeah. Good call. Is it is it in in your opinion essential to go at least travel to if not live in uh, yeah. those big cities in order to network? I mean, you you kind of gave us a little Nashville bit when that's a pretty big big city as far as music is concerned um, in the country. But yeah, do you feel like that's a, that's essential? Like you you really have to go to travel to these places. Yeah, that's a, I mean, what's funny is that if you'd asked me that same question like 10 months ago, I would have said 100%. Yes, absolutely. Like, I think it's very important. I still think it's extremely important because also I just think personally, like as a person, I I think you get growth. And when you travel to new places, you're just absorbing, you know, the the surroundings, the culture, the people. But yeah, I I think, um, gosh, the pandemic surely changed the terrain and the landscaping for work and where you have to be for work. I think that seriously put a curve ball in that equation, but I do ultimately, I feel like, I don't really like the word um, networking. I, I think I, because you know, there's nothing really um, mysterious in it. it it's really uh, one person meeting another person and doing it and trying to uh, gain 
real connection and create, you know, some sort of sense of commonality. And I think instead of networking, it's really building relationships and fostering relationships because at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We're not like automatons and like, we're not the corporation and like right. corporations exist, but they're made up of people. And so we're, we're bone and we're, we're soul and flesh. So yeah, I think that um, it, I would be nowhere. I would not have any of the uh, cool opportunities and experiences um, that I've been lucky enough to have had without people and working with people and, and meeting them. And so, yeah, and Angela is, you know, no exception to this. I, we connected during, I did a showcase for the Guild um, of Music Supervisors and we connected as a result mm -hmm. of that. And, you know, like, obviously Angela's great, like multi-instrumentalist, like she's awesome. Um, and I think though, you know, bigger picture it, in that regard, it wasn't like a, a networking thing, first of all. And secondly, um, it was, it was on zoom. Like it was a showcase that happened on zoom. So it's funny because wow. Okay. It kind of proves that you don't necessarily, you know, I didn't meet her when I was all of my trips out West, you know, it was like on the internet. So I just think it's a, it's a different landscape now. I think the pandemic has sort of demonstrated that. That is really cool. I, I definitely, uh, would not have thought that that would be that would be the case, but I suppose you're right. I mean, I mean, nowadays you can pretty much join any webinar or any kind of event like that. And, you know, just, just meet people who live even all the way in Europe or something, you know, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. interesting. No, that's really cool. Has, has the pandemic changed your career in other ways than that in a big way? Yeah. I mean, so I don't think it's probably not changed. Like, honestly, it's been, we were talking a little bit uh, before the interview about this. Like I, I've pretty much been hermiting it up anyways, like in terms of <laughs> like my work uh, kind of process, but um, you know, the, the most, gosh, I was saying this the other day, I consider myself to be an ambivert. So extroverted introvert, I recharge alone. I like reading. I like, you know, alone time. And then I love the social um, niceties that surround that. So going to a coffee shop is great because sometimes you can go, you can be immersed in people, but you don't necessarily have to like fully interact, mm -hmm. you know? And so I sort of like that, um, that kind of feeds me, but yeah, I think, gosh, being an ambivert, I, I, I kind of assumed, oh yeah, this will be a breeze. It'll be okay. Like I'm used to this. The thing is I never realized how, uh, cause as a human being, how, how vital it is to have any sort of social interaction with another fellow human being and, and my friends and my family and just being able to see them, you know, or like limit now how I see and when I see them. Um, it, it's a very, it's a very interesting sort of, um, honestly illuminating thing. Cause I didn't really, I don't think I'd fully tapped into that up until the pandemic showed me. So thank you pandemic cats off to you. But, um, yeah, I, I think, I think that it, it's definitely, you know, in my personal life, it's definitely, um, changed the way that I perceive, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and then uh, of course w within work parameters, like I was traveling all the time, every month I was traveling and, you know, I, New York, Nashville, LA, that was the revolving door. That was more or less, um, you know, what it was. So yeah, I was like, oh my God, I've never been, I've never been like in the GTA, like the greater Toronto area, not to be confused with like Grand Theft Auto. Um, I was going to say GTA. Yeah, I knew Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'd never, I was like, oh my gosh, I've never actually been stagnantly here, like for more than two, three months at a time. So yeah, definitely a different, sort of ball ball game but not bad you know it's pretty the seasons changing and i love it yeah yeah so do you find that uh do you live with family friends down there do you do you get to see more people that you know now you know that you're not traveling everywhere yeah i do i think that's been um definitely a silver lining in all of this um i'm i'm very close i come from a close family and so you know um, a couple of my best friends actually are my family. Um, my sisters, Stephanie and Catherine. Um, and uh, <laughs> shout out. Um, <laughs> yeah, woohoo. Um, yeah, so it's been, that's for sure. That's been an incredible um, gift to be able to, to hang out and see them literally all the time. I will say when you're with, when you're with your people, doesn't matter if it's family or friends, but people that you're extremely close to, 
-hmm. and that you ultimately love, um, you know, every day, it that also can can also take a little bit of its toll. Um, just I think in a normal kind of way where you're like, wow, this is potent. This is potent. But um, no, I, I think that's a, it's a gift. Absolutely. Like I also am just grateful that I get to see um, see my family and and two of my best friends external to my family as well because a lot of people are not fortunate enough to be in a position to do that right now. So, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. So, uh, so back to the, we were kind of talking about the networking thing before. Um, yeah. And I wanted to ask you, uh, you got a chance to work with um, Linda Perry's uh, song uh, yeah. from, from Welcome to the Blumhouse, which is an Amazon Prime uh, yeah. show. Um, and, and how did you, how did you get to meet her? And, uh, this is, this is for reimagining a song called what's up from, uh, from back in the day, right in the ni early nineties, was it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me a little bit about that and how did that all happen? And, and, and how did that, that relationship kind of push you forward? Yeah. Um, well, that was obviously that was it's a great opportunity you know in itself so I was like this is amazing um Linda and I connected I want to say about a year and a half ago um now during Canadian Music Week mm -hmm. and um I was in this basically it was the inaugural program with the Canadian Music Publishers Association so let's shorten that to CMPA <laughs> um mouthful another mouthful um and uh and it was this woman in the studio uh, studio program I was one in five, um, you know, I was one in five females in Canada and it was basically for um, female empowerment um, and of presence in music production specifically. Like that was the, the goal of, of it. It was really cool actually that that program in itself opened up some cool doors for me too. Like I went to, I got to go on behalf of the CMPA to the Junos, which are, you know, Canadian um, award show, um, which was really, really cool. So many, many great things from that. But anyway, Linda and I connected. Um, I was in that program and we were very involved with um, Canadian Music Week. Linda had come in to, she did like, you know, it's Linda Perry. She does panels. She does all these incredible sort of, you know, educational things as well. And then um, I found myself, I was, I got to go to uh, Revolution Recording Studios, mm -hmm. and which is a studio in Toronto. And we were, you know, we had like an hour together in the studio, which was phenomenal. And I, honestly, my goal was like, don't trip and fall on your face. That was sort of the goal. It wasn't <laughs> really like nothing beyond that. You know, I was kind of like, just don't embarrass yourself totally. Um, and uh, yeah, it was great. We, we clicked and, um, you know, she's kind of, she's kind of quirky and, you know, she, she, she called me a, a super nerd, I think. So <laughs> and at first I was like, oh my God, she thinks I'm a loser. Um, but then, but then as I'm like moonwalking out of the room, um, she, she laughed and I was like, oh, maybe she actually liked me. I don't know. Um, and, uh, I was like, I didn't fall or anything. So again, I was like success check. Um, but, uh, she, she just sort of, she actually phoned my house, which was so weird. Um, when That's I really think cool. about it, yeah, it was really cool. Very, very weird. I was like, how'd you get my number? Um, but, uh, <laughs> still don't know actually. <laughs> to this day. Um, but, uh, she, yeah. And then, you know, we basically, oh gosh, we were chatting, we were chatting ongoing on and off for like months and months following that, where we were exploring different avenues of working on things. You know, she'd actually had me working on a couple different things and then we had this shared you know, common vision artistically. I think we're on the same page, her and I, which is a marvelous, marvelous thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then when Blumhouse had approached her about reimagining this iconic song, which I myself had drunk sang it like karaoke at least five times, you know, up to that point. Um, I'm just being modest, it was more like nine. Uh, and uh, she, she had, uh, you know, she gave me a call and we were chatting and she, you know, um, approached me, me then with this idea. She's like, would you, do you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, hell yeah. Don't even have to think about it. Um, no brainer. And um, yeah. And then, you know, the ball sort of just kept rolling. It was, the thing is, if you're any sort of grand opportunity like this, obviously there's a pressure attached to it. You don't, like, you, you don't want to screw it up, right? Yeah. Um, and that's why it's so it's so vital to be surrounded by 
like-minded creatives um, and, and just individuals throughout that process. So I have to say like, you know, Amazon Music, I was working with their team. They were great. And Amazon just in general, great. Um, you know, Blumhouse, Linda and her label uh, team, We Are Here, Chris Kovacs, like all it takes, it takes a small village mm -hmm. to get anything like that off the ground, you know, so and bring it to fruition. So yeah, it was, it's very, been very cool. And, you know, it definitely opened up um, great things as a result after actually, I had my first Rolling Stone interview experience, which was really weird. I mean, awesome. But like, <laughs> but weird. It's not what I expected. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what really weird. Yeah. It was, so I felt like, well, first of all, like, I think I got the, the email um, like with the time of it and found out about it. I was like having dinner with my family and they're like, oh, Miss on her email at dinner. And I was like, no, I have like an interview with Rolling Stone. They're like, ha ha, good one. And I was like, oh, ha ha, no, like I really do. So it was it was a very, very cool, very cool. Yeah, how big is my my head right now? Um, but- <laughs> Dude, it's yeah, allowed to be that. Right. <laughs> No, it was, it was uh, totally surreal, but very, it was very fun. Um, yeah, so there have been great, you know, I had a, my first music video, which aired on Amazon Music as a result of it too. So yeah, all great things. Yeah. Very cool. And then just to clear that up, this is, and I, and I think it is at the very least in the trailer, mm -hmm. what was it also in the season too, do you know? So they used it as, yeah, the main, the main trailer for the four films. And then there were sub trailers that sort of spun as a result from it as well. Like it was like the common thread throughout the series, I guess. So like there was another promo video, um, you know, that actually incorporated like music video elements um, with shots of the movies and, and like new shots. And I think that's probably part of the battle that happened too. Like I had, I did when Maleficent 2 had come out, um, last year, I, I, you know, had the opportunity to have my music in the trailer, which was incredible. And then same sort of thing where they use the same song now in another spinoff of it. Like for that was like London, you know, red carpet premiere, Angelina Jolie walks the red carpet in London. And then you hear my music, but it's like they take the same song and they sort of, um, you know, piece it in different, uh, different, I guess, content for that. So, yeah interesting interesting so so obviously that was the one with with um linda perry and what's up um that one was a song that already existed that you were just kind of reimagining that's for right. that particular you know that particular yeah. case that's right uh, is there ever do you see more often than not that you have to just come up with stuff for a particular project or if they hear your stuff and they say oh we like that for our project then you kind of like mess with it how does that work um, yeah, that's a great question. I think, well, so I think it's sort of like, um, it's a little bit of a circle after a while where because of opportunities where I've created music for them, pe supervisors and sync houses and anyone really can go and listen to those examples. Mm -hmm. And then those help shape um, future sort of aspirations. But I do think um, like my experience has been sort of a mixed bag like I I've had placements in film and tv things based on music I just released and like mm -hmm. the music supervisor emailed me and was like hey like I heard da 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 da, da and can we use it in this right mm -hmm. um so it is it's a little bit of a mixed bag but I do think that because when I was first starting out um I uh I was like this feels so weird creating music like that I just want to create but it's not going anywhere but then I realized I was like no, 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 because it all creates like a, a, a musical CV, if you will. Like mm -hmm. it's like a reel, right? Mm -hmm. So you can always, I think, always be creating. And you never know, like you have to create, you have to have a product first before you can approach and try and do the networking. Like you have to have like your your thing, you know, what? who, who are you? What is your examples of things you've done? Because I think you can talk about things that you can do, but at the end of the day, we're us as a society too, where our attention spans are so short, we just want to be able to go and click and get an example right away. Absolutely. It, it's kind yeah. of like a, like an art or a photography portfolio. You, you, you totally. have to yeah. kind of, you know, have it somewhere to present, you Absolutely. know, like, yeah. how else do they know what your chops are like? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, and I think for a long, like for a long time, I was sort of, you know, you'd feel like a little silly kind of like, oh, I'm, 
writing another tune today, like another one, what's the point? Because honestly, sometimes it can feel like that. You know, I still have days where I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this today? But I think it's so, it's so um, important uh, as that sonic CV um, for perspective. Like, again, I hate like perspective clients. It's more like just people that can hear who you are. And, you know, if, if there, if there could be potential magic, you know, and shared vision. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, now, now you speaking about your music style, you kind of have, and, and I'm using borrowed words here from my coworker, uh, Shug yeah. Daniels. Um, uh, she says a niche for spooky, dark fairy kind of music. <laughs> That's what she calls it. Um, not sure if that were, that was your words or her words or well, my words. That's nice though. <laughs> sure that's, that's her words. Ed. um, in, in my research before talking to you, I, I found that you kind of also created your your own sound and your own genre by combining like the electronic with the cinematic, because you said you had your background in cinema and stuff like that. So I'm just like, your brain is, is awesome. And I just need to be able to like pick it apart. How do you get your inspiration for that style of music? Yeah, um, well, so yeah. Uh, the genre that I've sort of coined, I guess, over a little bit of time now is cinematronic, which is cinematic meets electronic. And it came about because, um, and, and this also speaks to the, what was it? The dark niche, what was it? Uh, fairy? fairy the, niche? Spooky dark fairy. Okay. <laughs> I love that, actually. I feel like Great. I incorporate that now more in my album artwork, maybe. I don't know. It's like, maybe like keywords, yeah. keywords. There you go. Great. I love that. Um, yeah. Well, you know what? I think because, uh, you know, I come from, yeah, this like cinematic background, um, in, even more specific in that classical music. Like I, I have classical, that was my training, right? Like classical piano. Um, I can't actually turn the iMac, but like there is a piano like right here uh, underneath. Yeah, it's like a MIDI controller. Yeah. So I, piano is like my instrument that I'm most comfortable with. I, I play a bunch, but this is the one that I'm like, um, you know, blindfold me. It's fine. Uh, and yeah, I think the classical music definitely seeps in and in terms of or orchestration of like stringed instruments and brass and all that fun stuff mm -hmm. that comes from that. But then the electronic presence, it, it stems from my love of sound design and my love of synths. So combining both like the marriage of this sort of technologically enhanced, um, you know, VST instrument world with the cinematic sort of live sound. Mm -hmm. Both of those, that's actually how the coining of Cinematronic came about. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think I think I'm attracted naturally to the dark, like not like actual like pitch black, like darkness, but I just like darker things, you know, don't let the sunny disposition uh, fool you. I really, really love dark shit a lot. Like, so, like movie kind of stuff. Like, I you know. do, yeah, yeah. Movies and and also just like things with emotional, it feels like emotionally sort of tense. And that's where resolution comes from, right? Like we feel that relaxed sort of, oh, like we, we can relax and we can breathe when we feel tension. So I feel like kind of exploring that, it has been, uh, you know, sort of significant in the music that I, that I create, I guess. I mean, I don't know. God. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say yes, just, <laughs> just to cover that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, just, just being able to go in and, and kind of uh, listen to some of the stuff that you have out there. Um, and, and, you know, the stuff that goes on the trailers and the movies and things like that and, and how that all kind of comes yeah. together. It's a very, very unique uh, kind of thing. And, and so it's really cool that you were able to carve that out for, for yourself and, Hopefully, you. you know, others along the line will, will pick it up. And, yeah. Absolutely. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. So you. now you're, you're clearly a successful person and uh, many <laughs> successful, everyone looks at me when I say that to them. <laughs> I <can laughs> ask this question a lot. Well, but, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Okay. okay. But um, how, I find that a lot of successful people have routines, 
that they do on a daily basis or a weekly basis or something um, that keeps keeps them on task, keeps them focused and motivated uh, yeah. to keep keep reaching for their goals. And um, whether it's something daily, like I said, or weekly, do you have anything you do, any routines or anything that you do to keep you kind of focused and yeah, I mean, gosh, yeah, my mind instantly went to like, I know some people like creative friends of mine, like they exercise because it helps to keep them like really like locked in and some people can go on a run. And that's, I guess, when their thought process becomes the most succinct. Mm -hmm. I don't run. I mean, I, I tried running once. I think I vomed pretty hard, to be honest. Like I'm not exactly the athletic type. Like it's, I'm, I'm actually pathetic. Like I take the stairs. I'm like, you're killing it. Like you're really doing well. Um, so not at all. Like I like, I like, you know, the idea of it, but I'm just, when it comes down to brass tacks, not so much. So I think in terms of a routine, um, I am a type A kind of personality. So I do create schedules for myself and I don't know how I would be able to operate, to be honest, without that sort of mode um just it's for my own sanity and I, I make lists and i check them twice so that i've been naughty or night i saw um but i i think in terms of a routine um mm -hmm. it, it's creating uh yeah it's creating a schedule creating um your day-to-day -day and 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 then adhering to it as well um because i think for me personal satisfaction comes from and i think you know i think we're all kind of like that where it's like whether it be i'm gonna clean my room today and then you actually do it you know um or in a job sense i think it's it's important to follow it's follow through and and trying to always follow through right. um that's definitely been my saving grace throughout the pandemic it's like, like try and do follow through so yeah do you have any piece of advice that you would give yourself um your your past self yeah. Um, to make your journey to where you are now a little bit easier for yourself? So I think for me, uh, me, me personally, I would probably, you know, go back in time and then sort of say, hey, man, life is long. This is a long game because the music is my life. Like me, this is what I want. This is what I've been doing. And this is what I want to do. So it's longevity, like for sustaining, sustaining growth, sustaining career. Um, you know, it's about the time as much as the hustle and the work, because I think, you know, experience is inherently linked to both. You can't buy experience. You can't manufacture experience. Um, and so I would go back in time and, and probably have a little sit down uh, chit chat and also about what success means, because I think I have, you know, the past couple of years, especially I've sort of like there's been a, a, sh a the, the tectonic plates have sort of reshifted and and like my ideology behind like what success is because it's not really like once you accomplish something that you've set up for yourself what does that mean does that mean you're now you're, you're success done. is you or you're yeah exactly and then like you cap you're like okay you know I cap out now I'm done like I think it's an evolving thing um and uh and I think success really comes from like where you find validation and it shouldn't necessarily be in the tangible. It can be nice. Like, I don't want to also like be completely, you know, dishonest to be like, I don't get validation from, you know, like, like, like tangible things. Like, of course I do. Like, you know, paycheck is nice. Like, that's a good thing. You know, I can pay my rent. Yes. But I, I, I think that, you know, yeah, I'd go back and be like, success isn't necessarily just this one thing. You know, it's like, it's a broader concept. And that comes again with that, like time, the experience thing so it's all like a nice little package um it's longevity like you know it's the long game it's not just like that flash in a pan and then that's it right it's marathon it's not a sprint yeah exactly yeah i don't run anyway so absolutely not yes <laughs> why would i bring the running thing into it after you just told me you're not a runner <laughs> oh, no 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 it's good it's good i uh wish i wish yeah well that's there you go that's funny. That's funny. Um, okay. So I think that we're, we're kind of wrapping this up. So can you go ahead and just break down where everyone can find you on social media and on the web? Sure. Um, if you just, just Google me, uh, well, I mean, so yeah, like I've got, uh, I'm, you know, I am, I am DB, I am DB page for mm -hmm. fewer, actually it's for, um, Alexandra Pekovsky as well, which is my, my, my real name, but um, Fiora is on Spotify. I'm on Amazon Music, Apple Music, YouTube. Um, I'm on all the social 
kind of media platforms, Instagram and, you know, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and uh, yeah, again, if you just, you could probably just Google Fiora, like F-J-O-R-A. Don't even worry about the theta O, you know, the line through the O. You don't have to worry about that. Like, you know, things will probably pop up, uh, hopefully all good. Um, but, uh, you know. They do pop up without the theta O. Yeah, so I'm I'm out there. I'm out there. Computer, you have to do that the weird alt uh, alt code. Yeah. It's a alt code yeah. for it. <laughs> you do. I hate working for it. That's no, too much work. Too much work. Too much work. Just use a phone. It'll be easy. <laughs> Save it, and then you can go. Who uses a computer anyway? I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for uh, taking some time and sitting down and answering all our questions. Appreciate it. Hells yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to you, to Gable. Well, thank you so much. Really. It's been a blast. It's nice. It's human interaction. It's like, it's I know, right? <laughs> I, think I see another person. Uh, I know, like, wow, this is so exciting. Cool. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and, and thank you everybody who's watching. Uh, appreciate you guys stopping in. If you like what you saw, go ahead and comment below, uh, hit the subscribe button, smash that bell, wherever it is. I think it's on this side. I'm never going to get that right though. Promise. Promise. Um, let us know. Did we answer all your questions? Do you have more questions? Do you have any other ideas for anyone else that we could talk to interview? What do you want to know about? What do you want to learn? What will help you get closer to your dreams? Um, yeah, that's it for us today though. Until next time. Peace out guys. Bye.